Hey there everybody, welcome back to another episode of Life in Germany here on our little YouTube channel, True North. Today we are going to be going into the old city of Regensburg and looking at some Roman ruins, some medieval ruins, and just see what it's like in the old city and check it out. So I'll catch you when we get all parked. Stay tuned. Upper Michigan, God's country as it were. Vast forests, beautiful scenery, breathtaking sights. A small town in the middle of nowhere, that's where I come from. Where as Americans we proudly wave the flag and stand for the flag. But in 2011 I married my wife, got on a plane, and moved to Germany. And so after being here for 10 years, I decided it's time to tell my story and share my experiences as an American in Germany. So follow me, a normal dude with a GoPro, a drone, and sometimes a fancier camera. And I'll show you what it's like here. Come with me and experience life in Germany. Up to this point, I've made numerous references to the fact that we live in Regensburg, but I've never really said more. In this episode, I'd like to go over a bit about the city and its rich and ancient history. And so with that, our little tour begins here in the parking garage at the Hauptplatz in the center of the city. make no sense you gotta wear them in the stairwell but when you get outside you don't have to anymore so whatever so we are here in a Dachauplatz on a beautifully gray dreary wet day I love those kind of days Dachauplatz is a square in the old city that is named after the Dachau concentration camp near Munich in honor or memoriam of its victims and survivors during the Holocaust. The first inclination that you'll have that Regensburg is very old is when you come out of the parking garage and you look towards the northeast corner of Dachauplatz, you'll see the Minoritenkirche, which is a church that originates from the 13th century and it originally started off as a monastery. In October 1944 to January 1945, during World War II, the Allies ramped up the bombing raids in Germany, of which the oil port in Regensburg was the target. On the 20th of October 1944, ordnance hit the old city and destroyed the roof of this church. It was first repaired in 1947 and 8. While the church stems back to the 13th century, Regensburg itself can be dated back to the 2nd century. Regensburg is located in the central east part of Bavaria, in the district of Oberfaz, of which it is the seat. Regensburg is located about 73 miles southeast of Nuremberg and 85 miles north of Munich. Its population is around 152,000. As reference, Ann Arbor, Michigan is about 120,000. Regensburg's history starts off officially in 179 AD with the completion of the Roman fort Castra Regina. We know this because of an inscription that was found commemorating the fort on the state. The fort was built during the reign of Marcus Aurelius and was home to the 3rd Italian Legion. Wait a minute, did you say Marcus Aurelius? Like the one from Gladiator, played by Richard Harris, who gets snuffed out by his son Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix? Yep, that's the one. In the movie, that's a fictitious portrayal of them, but they are real historical characters. Cool thing about Hagensburg is that they take a lot of the old wall structure and whatnot, the old part of the old ruins of, of Romans in the medieval times, and they incorporated them into the walls of, or they incorporated the walls of the new buildings that they made into the old ones to preserve the, the history and the, the, the ruins themselves. And uh, they did a really good job of how they did that, so it's pretty cool. 
In Regensburg, if you notice, there's a lot of these tiny little alleys and whatnot. Regensburg is also referred to as Little Italy because it looks so much like um, Italian cities, especially because of the Roman influence. So here's a prime example of what I mean where they took the old buildings, the old ruins, and they incorporated them into the new. This section of ruins here is the Porta Praetoria, or the Praetorian Gate in English, and essentially was the main gate to the inner section of the fort in the event that the outer walls were breached, as far as I could tell from my research. The plaque reads, Gate Pretoria of the Roman Castel Castro Regina, or Regina, built 179 AD by Caesar Marcus Aurelius, discovered 1885. The rough outline of Castro Regina can be seen here in reference to the old city of Regensburg. The fort acted more like a barracks than a fortress. It was roughly about 540 meters wide by 450 meters roughly 63 acres. Historians believe it consisted of eight towered gates, four cornered towers, 18 walled towers. The walls were eight to 10 meters high and there was a V-shaped ditch for protection around the castel. Because Regensburg is so old, it's a gold mine for artifacts, old architecture, old buildings and so forth. And here, just a block away or so from the St. Peter's Cathedral, is a wall painting depicting David against Goliath. And this originates from about 1573 or so, and it was restored numerous times over the years. But it's a very famous attraction here in Regensburg. One of the cool things about Regensburg and these old cities, these old medieval cities, is that everything's so crammed together and the alleyways are so narrow. So it's a, it's a really characteristic trait of these old cities. As we walk in the other direction, towards the Danube River, we come to a famous bridge that's here in Regensburg. That's called the Steinerne Brücke, which means the Stone Bridge. So we're here now on the Stein der Brücke in Regensburg and this is the bridge that spans across the Donau or the Danube River. This initially was a, there was a bridge built by Charlemagne in the, what the, the 10th, that would be the 10th century or so, the 1100s. Um, it was a wood bridge initially but because it was so small and because it was prone to flooding and whatnot they they built a, a stone bridge in its place so that was this bridge here and this bridge was built over the course of 11 years they figure and it was probably from 1135 to 1146 or so was when it was built and um, it's been upkept since and this bridge was used, for example, during the Second Crusades by the French King, King Louis VII, on their way to Israel, or Jerusalem. And for about 800 years, this was the only bridge that actually spanned the Donau here in Regensburg. So that's pretty cool. <sighs> you gotta love graffiti. But at least these morons were smart enough, <laughs> or considered enough, I guess, to write on the new stuff and not the old, not the old stuff. So, I guess there's that. And so behind me, there's a um, a Wursthaus. 
which has been here for a long time. I'll have to look up the exact date, but it's been here for a long time. It's a historic one. You can see behind me there. Um, but they got really good Wurstchen. So, like little sausages, and you have them with a little bun. And usually they put sweet or sour, uh, sweet or they call it spicy. It's not really spicy. It's like normal, normal yellow mustard on there, and it's really good. So we're going along Tundorfer, Tundorfer Straße, and this is where they have um, ship museums, and where you can also go on like a little cruise. They have little cruises here on the river, where. The, the, the cruise ships actually go from city to city on the river and um, they stop here for a little bit so you can you know tour everything and and then uh, buy your souvenir stuff and then head back on the boat and get going and I've not I've never done that yet but actually that sounds like a very interesting thing to do I would definitely be interested in that so Leaving Tundorfer Straße on the edge of the river, we head back to the center of the old city. And here we come to Domplatz, or Cathedral Square. As we come around the corner, we approach easily the most awesome, breathtaking building here in the city of Regensburg, the St. Peter's Cathedral. So behind me, this is the crown jewel of Regensburg, the St. Peter's Dome, named after St. Peter, uh, or Peter the Apostle. And the initial building was started in 1275 and, and completed in 1450. Um, and for, in 1450 it was roofed and it was used for, for services and whatnot, but it, it did not have the spires then. And then the spires were started and completed from 1859 to 1869. Um, so only about 150 years ago the spires have been there and they're 105 meters tall. But in 2019, they had a, um, a group from France that came and um, did like a light show here to commemorate, commemorate the 150 years of the dome being completed. And that was, I didn't get to go to that, but my wife did and uh, it was pretty cool. I got to see the pictures. So that was kind of cool. It's actually really nice and quiet right now. Usually this is hustling and bustling with people but it's it's only 7 40 still in the morning so it's nice and quiet and i don't have to worry about getting everybody's face on camera in germany there's this supposedly there's this law i've never looked it up myself but i've always just believe everybody that if you have less than 10 people on camera in a photo or a video you have to go to them and you have to get permission to use it or I guess you could also blur out everybody's face, that's usually what I do. But that's why I wanted to go this morning and when there's less people and film here now so that I don't have to deal with that later. Plus I don't like filming in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> So the church behind me here, we're at Neufauplatz and the church behind me is, it's not, I mean, it's not as lavishly built. It's pretty impressive still, but this would be the, um, this is an invent, essentially in America, we would call it a Lutheran church because you had when the, after Martin Luther, you had the Protestants that split off and then you had the Catholics and in German, they're called Evangelisch. So it's essentially Protestant, but you can see that it's not as lavishly built. That wasn't as important to them as it was to the Catholics to have a very um, lavishly built church. So 
Sounds like somebody's playing an organ here. Let's go check it out. Okay, well the organ stopped playing now, but that's something also I didn't know for the longest time that traditionally when they played the organ in these old, okay, there it goes again. But when they played the organ in these old churches, um, they, usually, they usually played classical music like Bach or um, Beethoven, different things like that. So it's kind of interesting. So we leave Neufahrplatz and we head back over to the east side of the city, to the original eastern gate of the city of Regensburg. We're on our way now to the eastern gate. We're in the Ostengasse. I don't think I've actually been here before. Um, I might have drawn by, but I've never been here on foot, so this will also be new to me. So, yeah, I've driven through here before, but I've actually never been here on foot, so this is, this is cool. We're inside the Eastern Gate right now. So this was the Eastern Gate of Castellagina. My mistake, not a gate of the Roman Castel, but rather one of six gated towers that served as the entrance to the fortified city of Regensburg. And it was built about 1284. Then of course it was taken over throughout the years and uh, rebuilt and reused. And yeah, so this is the original gate, pretty cool. As we leave the Eastern Gate, we head back to where we started at the beginning of this episode, to Dachauplatz, namely to the parking garage. In the basement of the parking garage, there's a Roman artifact, the original Castell Wall. This is, um, this is a spot that's incorporated into the bottom of the parkhaus at uh, Dachauplatz here, and this is the old they found a section of Roman wall, and so that's here behind me. So you can see down on the bottom, that's where the Romans built, uh, right in here. And then as you go up further, you can see that you have, um, with the medieval, during the medieval period, they added onto it. So it's pretty cool. And like I said, they incorporated this into the park house here in, um, into the parking garage here in, on um, Dachauplatz. So that's really cool. Well, everybody, we're back at the car. Um, we're gonna have to end this here because the battery in the GoPro is dead, everything's wet, and I'm getting really hungry. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I hope to catch you guys next time. Take care. So whether you're a German citizen, a European citizen, or somebody from the United States coming over to visit, I would definitely recommend checking out the city of Regensburg, especially the old city. Whether, you're, whether you want to see old ancient ruins, old architecture, or if you want to walk down the narrow streets, 
visit a cafe or the small shops, or look at the different statues and sculptures, Regensburg is definitely one of the places to check out. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope that you can subscribe and I can see you again in the future. Thanks again. And special thanks to Google for allowing me to use their maps and fly-ins. If I was able to use my drone, I would definitely do it. But thanks to very strict German laws, I can't. So, yeah. Take care. We'll catch you guys next time.